Good afternoon. I'm Paul McGowan. Let's let's see what's in store for us today. I love these. We're just going to do one a day, and uh, unless they're super short, and then we can we can try a second one. But let's see who this is from. All right, Chris from Colorado Springs. Hey, right around the corner. Uh, Chris writes, how long do tubes last? Uh -huh. And how do you know if they need to be replaced? How do they fail? Do they fade over time in some way or just stop working abruptly? I have a phono preamp with a single tube in it and I'm just curious. Great question. Thank you, Chris. Um, I am a solid state guy who has always loved tubes and uh, it wasn't too long ago that uh, I got ganged up upon by uh, Bascom King and Arnie Nudell and uh, started putting tubes into our equipment after 40 years of being solid state only. And I, I've always loved the sound of tubes. I, I, I like a lot about tubes. Uh, in, in a, they're, they're not very good for an output stage, in my opinion but they're great for input stages. There's, there's very few things that are as good as a tube. In fact, I can't think of anything as good as a tube for an input stage. They, they're just lovely sounding devices. And of course, you can, you can play the tube game. You can uh, change the entire sound of an amplifier, a phono preamplifier in Chris's case, by changing the tube. Just make sure you put the right kind in there. But there are, you know, many, many kinds of tubes and all of them have a different sonic character to them. It was originally one of the reasons that I disliked tubes because I can, I can choose a, a MOSFET or a JFET or a bipolar and be pretty assured that when I put that in, I can guarantee how that's going to sound and I can work everything around it in this mix that designers uh, like myself and the other people in our engineering staff um, take the time to tune our equipment or voice our equipment. I, I can make sure that it's voiced the way I think it should be voiced. It can sound like music and I can guarantee that one after another of the hundred or a thousand pieces that we output will all sound very similar. That's the advantage of solid state. Having said that, um, tubes are a lot more variable. So the good news about them is they actually in certain positions sound better and more musical with more space and air around them than do solid state inputs. So now to Chris's question. How do you know if a tube's going bad and how do they go bad? And there are any number of ways. And again, I am not a vacuum tube expert. Um, solid state stuff, I can, I can work with the best of the people around. But tubes, I understand how they work, but to be honest, I haven't worked with them for 40 years. I haven't, I've played with them, but I, I haven't designed with them and haven't spent a lot of time with them. What I can tell you is that um, there's any number of things that can happen from the, the glass envelope. Well, we all know that tubes are in a vacuum, right? They're called vacuum tubes. The little glass envelope is there to, uh, like a light bulb, to protect the uh, the filament, the and, and uh, the three sections, the plate, the grid, and and the cathode. And the cathode being the heater that boils electrons, the grid being like a fly swatter um, that controls this, these boiling electrons, whether they flow up to the plate or or not, and how much they flow. Sort of this uh, uh, this this gate, and if we apply a little voltage to the gate. Um, then they start conducting and the boiling electrons go up to the plate and current flows. And that's how we uh, make a tube work. Well, that works best in a vacuum. And the better the vacuum, the better that the tube is going to operate. Over time, these glass envelopes leak. So you'll get some tubes, um, you can get uh, air into them and they'll perform less. The materials themselves that the tubes are made out of uh, over time and use can degrade. So there's, uh, and you've just reached about the extent of my knowledge about tubes. But my rule of thumb is about a year, uh, depending on how much you use it. So for example, uh, my BHK 
preamplifier and power amplifiers were all put in about the same time. And a few months ago, I, I just wasn't as happy with the system than uh, I had remembered uh, being. And I've got a pretty revealing system in the huge Infinity IRS 5s in Music Room 1. You, you can hear stuff, but the process of degradation of anything, especially a tube, is slow and steady. So you'd, it's not like a slap in the face, right? It just happens slowly over time. So it had been about a year, and I had a friend coming over there. I wanted to make sure the system was at its peak, and I thought, do I risk changing tubes? Why do I say that? Well, tubes, like anything, have to burn in. They don't just pop in and work. You're going to have to put them in. You're going to have to burn them in overnight. Uh, you don't want to go too far, but not too little. So I thought, yeah, let's do it. So I retubed the entire system, the BHK monoblocks, the BHK preamplifier, and like, holy moly, that was it was stunning. I mean, I had forgotten how much life was in that system, and it had slowly just crept out over the course of the year. It still sounded great. I mean, I had just had guests uh, from out of town that were in that were just blown away with how the system sounded. But I can tell you from listening to it, turning the system off, retubing it, turning it back on, I was like, whoa, I was floored. So yeah, you know, and then they needed to burn in overnight. My friend came and he was excited and that was fine. So tubes do uh, go bad. Sometimes they go completely bad, bonk, bonkers, and they just don't work. And you'll know that. But in general, I'm going to say about once a year, you want to retube that system and just breathe new life back in it. Anyway, great question, Chris. And thank you for asking. <music>